Yay Networks. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Spill the Beans podcast. I hope you guys are having a great summer so far because the tea is teeing on TikTok, guys. I'm actually so excited to talk about this because if you know, Jonathan and I went through a toxic stage when we were younger and Cristian Nodal got me through our breakups. Uh -huh. Well, I guess not got me through. It kind of made me feel the breakups more. But I remember just blasting Cristian Nodal in my car on my way to work, school, the gym, wherever. And he was like, when I think about Jonathan and I's toxic stage, it's Cristian Nodal and Julio Alvarez. I just want to start off this podcast by saying I don't think he did anything wrong. I'm, we're Team Christian over here, babe, right? You told me last night that you're Team Christian. So. They were, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, is he paying just you? Just kidding. Just. <laughs> I can already. You're like, babe, oh my. Okay. Never mind, guys. Yeah. <laughs> that was just a joke. You were, I thought you were like, actually, I don't know. You scared me. <laughs> I was like, wait, when did I say this? Was I? No. Well, how do you say her name before we start? Angela. I don't want, no, no. Oh, Casu? Casu. I think so. Caso. But no caso. No, caso. Oh my God. This, like, if you think that Cristian and Angela were doing this for marketing, it's working because that's all I can think about. I can only think about Cristian and Angela and I can only like listen to his music and be like, this mother effer singing about heartbreak and he's the one that's over here playing everyone. But like, did they need it? Like, they were both popping. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that's what artists do when, like, they're falling off and, like, they need to spice things up again. Or they have an album that's about a job. But Christian's been, like, every banger, every song he comes out is a banger. Angela's still writing on that. Dun, 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 dun. That song's yeah. still popping, you know? I just don't know because, like, if I think about it, if Angela was doing this for marketing, right? I think that this is the worst publicity that you can get, like being a homewrecker vibe. Yeah, especially being like recordings of you saying all the stuff you especially said. Especially you commenting on their picture being saying, Pan de su relación, and then, Ay, voy a ser tía. Like, I think that's what happens, babe. What, what's the stat we always say that like 79% of all cheatings or affairs happen at work? Yeah, I and know. And this is what happens when you work with someone. But like my thing is that, so their song was filmed two years ago or the really? music video. Yeah, I it's know. It's been that long? Yeah, I thought it was like two months ago. And if he was, if their love was so awaited for and this relationship has been waiting to happen, like why did he have to go and get someone pregnant in between? You know, like I him. don't think the pregnancy was planned. No, you think right? that it was just a little slip up? Yeah. And he wanted to like be a good dad. Or he is gonna be a good dad, I'm I'm assuming. Babe, did you ever see the live of him and Belinda? They were on Instagram live and he was like, Déjame darte un bebé. Like like literally like talking oh, like a baby. Ew. No. <laughs> he was like, Déjame dar and she was like, No, todavía no, como lo va a llegar a la casa de mis papás embarazada sin anillo, you know? Oh, like she was like you know respecting herself type vibe and he was over here trying to get her pregnant oh, so, so like maybe he was yeah whether you think or not it was a surprise like it kind of just seems like he wanted a baby yeah but like they say being a dad is easy being a mom isn't have you seen that tiktok yeah. where he's like on stage it's hugging her and casu is like at home with her baby girl damn that's sad <sighs> guys i just want to know like please but at the end of the day babe they're both <gasps> millionaires they're both rich to go cry in your mansion i like, know they're literally fine but do fine. you like She'll honestly think that like no le llega angela like she's like do you think because the beef yeah like do you think she's just like eh, whatever like i'm with the love of my life or she's like fuck like i screwed up she's also what 20 so you you gotta compare apples to apples like she's a 20 year old babe that's like really rich and famous like her ego is probably through the roof. Like, si nosotros tenemos ego, you know? Ahora, si se dice ego. Egos. No. Si ella tiene, you know, I'm pretty sure it's ego. Oh, sí, right. ego, egoísta. Egoísta. Okay. Um, so ahora imagínate ella que, like, es hija de Pepe Aguilar. Oh. She's probably like, nah, me vale. I can get. She makes me so mad, especially. <laughs> Have you seen the TikToks where it's like, 
Oh, but she died. It's like a little toddler, and she has a really short haircut. And she's like, I can't see my my niece the same because it just reminds me of Angela. Oh <laughs> hell no! Que te hizo la sobrina. Oh no, guys. Honestly, like, can you please tell me your two cents in the comments because this has just been circulating my brain for the last week, and I'm just really angry at Christian because, like, la morra, you know, Angela could only do as much as he allows her to do you know like if he really respected casu he was he could have been like you know what let's just hold off on a relationship for a little longer but this girl went on a magazine and said it like spilled the beans didn't they i think that him and casu broke up like two months ago if, at most oh so they were broken up yeah oh, well, makes it but then the speculations and the rumors say that angela's pregnant shut up and that they got married in italy angela and nodal yeah don't you have to divorce first? Well, I don't think well, he was divorce married. divorce doesn't take... I thought they were. I don't think he was married to oh, Casu. okay. No, I think they were just... <gasps> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, babe. Yeah, I guess I haven't really dug into too much of the team. I don't even know what I had for dinner yesterday. For real, but... I don't know. I'm just a Christian hater now. I still love his music. Like, he's very talented, but I don't think I can stand him as a guy, like, as a person. Guys, can you please stop tagging me that I look like him? I don't look babe, like I him. Babe, I really think that's a compliment. No, it's not, yes, babe. It I don't is. look. I don't have a problem with him. Like, oh, okay, you know. But I just don't see it. No, Christian looks like you because you're older than him. I am. <laughs> yeah. No way. He just turned twenty five in January. Oh, mm -hmm. Damn. Damn. He looks. Boris, yeah, he's gone through life then. Cause he's well, older. Mm -hmm. when he had like when he got his tattoos in his face and shaved his hair and dyed it green. Oh my god. He looked like he was in his forties. But now he's like kind of coming yeah, back a little bit. Back. So now when I'm getting tagged on like the reportista things on TikTok and they're like, oh, I thought this was Jonathan. I'm like, Thanks. nah, no. Thanks, my. You're capping. Thanks, Cristiano. That looks like Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> and I can sing like him too. Oh, when I'm drunk. Okay. No, I've I've always liked Cristian ever since um, yeah. I think a lot of people started hating him when he did the whole Grupo Firme thing. Guys, cancel me. But I didn't think he said anything wrong. He just said, no me, like, para col colaborar, que me tiene que gustar la música. Me, personally, I felt that because I'm not the biggest Grupo Firme fan. But not Grupo Firme, I'm not the biggest Banda fan. Mm -hmm. I love Banda, I'm Mexican. But if I had to choose, if I had to rank it, it's probably on my, like, lower tier list, you know, compared to, like, Cumbias, Norteñas, all that. So, when he said that, it's like, you know what, like, he's being honest. He's like, para col colaborar. Me tiene que gustar la música. Yeah, I guess. That's all he said. And then Edwin was like, en otras palabras, me mandó la chingada, you know? So it's like, I don't know. Ever since then, I, I still liked him. And that's when everyone started hating him. Yeah, I guess. I guess I'm the opposite. Like, I really love his music. He's so talented, but I don't like him as a person. Like, I just oh. feel like he carries himself kind of like yeah. too, too strong. Like, even Angela. She's so talented, but she just looks like like the way that she bien talks mamona. in interviews. Oh, yeah, like que es mamona y que no cae bien. Yeah, I just feel like for Nodales, it's like a lot of celebrities struggle with this when they get fame and money way too quickly. Mm. And Nodal wasn't he like a poor little kid that went on that show? The oh, I didn't know that. You didn't know that he no. won that show. The basically, like I forgot. You guys comment down below. But it's el, el show donde ganan. Like basically, like the voice for oh. but in Mexico, and he won that, and then that's where he popped off. Like that's yeah. where, you know, he, people started um. Recognizing I know that. If he was more humble, he'd be more famous. But even like Angela, like I feel like she has she carries herself that way because she's a nepo baby. You know, like she she had fame before anything, and yeah. she's really talented. So like, imagine that just adds on top. She's really young. Maybe when she's twenty five, she'll be a little bit more. That mature. sucks. Like I was telling my sweater this other day, like. I feel like if you don't raise your kids right, they'll ruin everything you've ever built, you know? So, like, siempre hay el papá, or, like, la, la pareja, pues, que se esforzó mucho. Like, they, they sacrificed to build, like, an empire. For example, el papá de Pepe Aguilar, Antonio Aguilar, you know, the one I told you that was famous in movies and sang very good. He's the one that came from being poor. And then even Pepe Aguilar, the dad, the Angela, is the one that acts like, he still acts like a jerk sometimes. He you does? Know? Yeah, he's oh. like, él es mi mamón. So then Angela is mamona. So then it's like, they're slowly giving like the Aguilar family such a bad name that their dad like built so beautiful. That is so embarrassing.
If you're a new parent, a bad day usually means you either ran out of coffee, diapers, patients, or all of the above. Stocking up on cold brews and deep breaths are all you. But at least Hello Bellos got your baby's butt covered. Hello Bello believes all families deserve premium, affordable baby products with their ultra convenient diaper bundle subscription service that includes seven packs of diapers and four packs of plant based wipes. You'll never run out of supplies. Better yet, they're delivered to your door. Set, change, and cancel your delivery schedule whenever you want. As a parent, we know how hard it is to remember to have everything you need to buy all the time. This is a busy parent's dream. Hello Bello gives you both cloud-like softness and absorbency. They launch new diaper designs frequently to make dressing up your babe fresh and fun. And these designs are so cute. I didn't think it would be possible to be jealous of a diaper. Named best diaper subscription by New York Magazine and winner of the 2022 Good Housekeeping Parenting Award, Hello Bello will keep you well stocked on diapers and wipes. Go to hellobello.com slash spill the beans to get 30% off your first customized bundle and a full size freebie of your choice. That's hellobello.com slash spill the beans to start bundling with 30% off your first order. Don't forget that's hellobello.com slash spill the beans. <sighs> but anyways, guys, honestly, I don't want to spill more tea anymore because that was I don't fun. Give them We've more. never really like covered news covered like cheese man but it's i guess this one was just so oh my god babe but do you know how they were ca- calling angel aguilar la panini de este um cosama generation panini yeah did what you ever that? hear about that no, I oh my god i'm gonna give you like the quickest spark notes okay. so basically this girl's llama carla panini se me hace, i don't know please don't quote me i am not a news reporter but so it's these two best friends mexican best friends right best friends have this lavanderia show and it's like a comedy show and they're so hilarious and they're so rich and famous um and then her best friend so panini's best friend gets cancer and then shortly after that they're mind you they're famous they're going on world tour in the thick of their fame and world tour maybe not world tour just in mexico the best friend finds out that panini is sleeping with her husband oh my god God. And how then, does that even happen and then he divorces her and marries panini mm. and then she dies from cancer oh my god and are they still together yeah and panini had the nerve to go on a podcast i don't know how recent it was saying like si me odian, like whatever you're still being feliz blah, blah blah don't let your best friend get in the way of meeting your future husband okay ladies that's the moral of this story <laughs> 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 no, yeah, that's, yeah. I, I get it, like i just don't get why celebrities do this like angela like let's we're being very like hyper like exaggerated but let's just for the sake of the story could have any man in the world you know she's like well that's why so like because why she go can after? have anyone she wants and like i don't blame <gasps> that's true. her do you know because who else got like exposed for doing that ariana grande supposedly oh really she was starting oh, for to that do that guy that guy was yeah supposedly... so they're saying que la, la ariana grande mexicana oh my god yeah maybe that is a celebrity like i can have anyone but i want it's like their guilty person. pleasure would you say yeah. is there a guilty pleasure mm-hmm. that Fetish, is guilty pleasure fetish that's sexual well i guess i mean i don't know guys i just feel really bad for kasu and for his daughter because i feel like regardless like from her growing up till 18 she's probably gonna love christian right like oh my dad he's amazing but like when you turn 18 and you start like finding out that oh he did this to my mom well she had she was just like recently postpartum well not really she's like nine months um i would be really mad at my dad don't you think yeah but if my dad bought me a ferrari and i went to a private school oh my god babe you're like janking me this episode i don't know if you're being for real <laughs> sorry babe it's because you know what happens when i have caffeine Ian, please clip all those times where he's <laughs> left me speechless and make them into a tiktok please but anyways guys uh, that is it that's enough because jonathan no is there's just, one more babe what now that we're like let's go full gordo y la flaca that's perfect what you soy el gordo y tu la flaca <laughs> anyways okay um, do you know what i heard about cody and the what's her name tiana is that a name? Mm, TT. Because you know how she said, oh, Heartbreak I'm supposedly, like, like this is like, what did she say? Like, this is un, un, fixable. unfixable. They're saying that he got another girl pregnant. Mm-hmm. Because For those that don't know, it's a football player, TikTok. It's a TikTok couple. The guy's a famous football player for the ugly. Bengals. And she's uh, ugly, too. 
She's not ugly. She's cute. Hey, let's be fair, babe. You're calling him ugly. Babe, I he's don't think actually she's the- ugly. Like, not just, like, appearance-wise, but he's, like, an ugly person. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if he, if he cheated on her, then, yeah, but he's ugly. But it's cause, because... Okay, if you don't follow along and you want to just get into Stranger's Tea, go on TikTok, search Cody Ford and TT, and you will get all the tea. But basically, they just got engaged. She went on a girl's tri- girl's trip to Europe. While she's on live in the morning getting ready, one of her comment moderators says, I just got screenshots of Cody cheating on you last night or something. And TT ends the live. And then two days later, she posts uh, a TikTok to Sabrina Carpenter's Please, Please, Please. He's like, one thing, heartbreak is one thing, my ego is another, I beg you don't embarrass me, and then she like goes like, oh fudge, he embarrassed me, and then she posts a TikTok saying that they broke up, and that it's unfixable, so people are like, you know what, like, if you're engaged, and you're like in love with someone, and they cheat on you, sometimes more than not, like, you'll probably forgive them, and they're a millionaire football player, (laughs) you'll forgive them, and then like, continue with the relationship, right, but if he cheats on you, and gets a girl pregnant like that is pretty unfixable yeah so that's why everyone's speculating that not only did he cheat on her he actually got someone pregnant and then like a bunch of people are saying that um they would like people that work at the bars in cincinnati that he would always go to the bars and like ask girls numbers and stuff yeah that he was a serial cheater yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. i just like i like girls that are like there's the girls that are like that say something but then in their heart they know it's not true and then there's the girls that say what their heart says so you know with the whole wendy and willito situation how like she took him back because he flew to colorado with Mm -hmm. a mariachi and it's like the flowers were beautiful in the mariachi and it's like girl like i took back my ex and he didn't even give me one flower so you you know so i I feel like that's the same thing like with uh tt like before the whole baby speculation like you know like if he takes them back, whatever, you know, there's girls that don't take back, you know. That take out, they take back broke baby daddies that don't have a car. Exactly. And he's a, he's a multi-millionaire football player, but. Yeah. But it's unfixable, so. So it must be a baby. But I wanted to bring that one up, guys, because I want to talk to you girls about, like, the whole, like, I know there there is a situation out there, so I want those girls to comment and give their two cents the whole thing with this cody and tt thing was their whole like vibe or what made them funny i guess was that she's like super bubbly and outgoing and like you know like sweetness sweetness and he was very like con la cara de fuchi like 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 he seemed annoyed all the time yeah seemed annoyed but like in a, sometimes it would be cute like oh my god the bubbly girlfriend with the big football player that is like quiet you know sometimes they give that vibe and it was cute but more than often he did give the vibe of like ya he was just annoyed. Like, oh like he's just annoyed and a lot of tiktoks came out like imagine you just played you just got smacked you just got hit by 300 pound men all day and you have to come to this and it's like the girl like talking Aww. like a little like like she was talking to a dog like cody you know like that and he's like imagine you just got rammed by 30 300 pound men and you have to come home. anyways uh so there, those girls that do have those boyfriends where like it's like you know i feel like those some there are some guys that are like super like in love and sweet but like how do you like accept that love language you know what i mean like when you are not reciprocate reciprocated oh my god because i feel like there's some women that are like yeah my husband looks like he hates me but then he does he always makes sure my my car in the morning has gas my oils change he leaves flowers in the door but then doesn't talk to me all day do you know what you know what i'm trying to say like yeah it's because you just have to be like a special type of woman to like accept that yeah because a lot of comments were like oh i have a grumpy a grumpy boyfriend too or i have a grumpy husband too like he's always mad and like blah 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 but he loves me like to death like he would do anything for me yeah so i guess it just kind of depends on how they treat you like at home but with cody and tt i feel like he visibly looked like maybe they were just playing it off because she was like this is how we get views so just act like that but if he was actually like that which more often than not i feel like they're not they kind of just play for it they play the part to make more views um like after the game ones i would understand when she would be in the bleachers see your mis high school soccer games you were there and we would like either we because we never lost just showing off but um i beg to differ (laughs) <laughs> i think out of my whole high school we lost two games mm-hmm. but 
even when like say we would win but i i thought to myself i was always hard on myself i didn't perform like i should have i would be mad so i'm imagining him like either you lost the game or you did bad and then you know i was like okay there you know see si tiene razón con la cara de fuchi but yeah but like the rest like there was one in particular i saw where they were like driving I think they were going home from somewhere, like flying home. Oh, and yeah. she was like, he was like, yeah, you're just dragging me all these places. And she's like, you literally went to Coachella for free, you know? Yeah. And so it's like things like that. Like, I don't know. He just always, like his body language was so like. How long were they dating for? I have no idea. Honey. Because I also saw that it's karma because he cheated on his girlfriend with Oh, Titi. yeah, with Titi. Todo se devuelve, guys. And Cristian Nodal is going to get it hard. Even Dude, Cristian Nodal's karma. Oh, baby. I can't wait to see it because it's mother effort but anyways um and on other news i'm obsessed with sabrina carpenter guys like i know like you scroll on tiktok and it's like please 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 i hope don't embarrass me motherfucker you know like it's <laughs> literally the song in every single but i am obsessed and you know what my guy's girl is over here he loves the song too so i Who? get to play you oh yeah i've been <laughs> i've been um, my boy cupid um her sabrina carpenter Live in Maddie, like when I was little, like that mm -hmm. was a shit, you know. Obviously, Girl Meets World, Live in Maddie. Yeah, Dove. What's her name? Dove. Ca Dove Cameron. Even though she just went kind of weird, though. but she's so gorgeous too. But um, oh, Carly? probably the big sister from um, Good Luck Charlie. Good Luck Charlie. Yeah. I don't know, guys, but that song lives rent free in my head. Like the just like the the lyrics are amazing. Sabrina Carpenter, she's gorgeous. Like watching her perform this song on stage she eats every outfit she wears and like the vibe of the song is just like i'm mm. in a roller skating ink in the 80s yeah. bopping you know so yeah jonathan lets me play the song at least twice in a car ride which is a lot for him and i love that yeah guys just because i love the 80s i always say i wish i was born in the freaking 60s oh sorry a lot of people say like say you love the 80s oh i wish i was born in the 80s no you don't because then you would be zero and you would be 10 in the 90s so I wish I was born in the sixties, so I could be twenty in the eighties. Mm. Okay. So next time when you are gonna say that phrase, guys, think I about wish that. I was born one. in the sixties, yeah. but yeah, amazing. Love her. She eats. Um, okay, but now can we actually get into the the real toxic? Wait, episode, babe, before babe. you start. So all the people from the eighties, like the <laughs> ones we see in the videos. Like, they're so cool, right? With yeah. their mullets and their mm -hmm. dance moves and their cool crop sunglasses. tops. Guys were wearing crop tops, uh, heels, like the boots with the heels, roller skating. But nowadays, those MFers are the ones at the grocery store staring at you and being mean and being boomers and yelling at people and customer service. I think it's because, like, life has changed so much. Like they used But they to be were the so coolest. Happy. That's why, because they were so happy in the 80s. You and would then think, like... Yo, like I was rad. Like I was so cool. Well, like yeah, but now then I'm gonna be nice to and not everyone. I I viejitos that did keep that vibe, you know, like they're so cool. But more than often it's the freaking boomers. Well, because I feel like you coming from when you were twenty and like Or like for chilling. example, um I used to have uh when I worked in Greeley, which is a very like a uh, Republican city for white people, my uh foreman, sweetest guy ever. No, not sweetest nicest guy no not nicest he was kind of a dick how do i say <laughs> like he was just a cool guy okay <laughs> and he was old and white and obviously for the sake of the story he would say very bad things about you know the lgbtq community not bad like i hate them but like he would say stuff like oh that's so gay or the f word you know but then he would tell me stories about him when he was young and him and his brother would work fishnet crop tops Bruh. So it's like I was like, not you outing him. Bleep that out. <laughs> <laughs> I would be like, Steve, <laughs> yo, how are you gonna say that nowadays? All these young college kids are gay, but you were rollerblading with a fishnet crop top with your long hair, you know? So it's like, when? Why did they get so? Where sour? did the switch go? Yeah. Well, like I'm saying, you don't I let me finish my sentence. Us. Is that they were living freely and cool and vibes, and now they live in this society where everything's like shit. Yeah, like we basically have gone but to shit. But why are they mad if they got their house for like three dollars and <laughs> That's their car why, for? Because they're trying to move and now they can't. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
I hope that doesn't happen to us, babe. I want to be the cool. Me too. That TikTok you sent me the other day of uh, Two Turn Timmy's dad, that's who I'm trying to be. Two Turn Timmy? The, that's his name, the dad. The, that's the son's name. The guy with the, the TikTok, like, this is Jonathan when he's older. Where he's like, oh, yeah. Outfit check. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I hope we're like that, too. I hope we're the cool grandparents, you know? But anyways, guys, so I just wanted to talk about this because we're going to read a uh, a little bit of advice questions and um, so the other day my mom and i were talking and she was telling me about this story she has from like when we lived in this house we call her we call it the house on 18th right and we moved to this house right right before i graduated high school or right after no right after i graduated high school and we were still in our toxic stage all right so then i told my mom i was like you know what mom i actually don't have any memories of me living at the house like i don't remember what my room looked like i don't remember really? yeah yeah i don't All remember my memories are from that the, my only memory from that place is the fish of you leaving the fish and it that's freezing. when i started sleeping with you yeah like living with us yeah and sneaking in okay anyways um so i do ask my mom like i don't have many memories so then I like started thinking about it. And I was like, okay, let me remember like what it was living there and uh, our memories. And it was like Jonathan and I were kind of like in, we were still toxic, but it was, a, it was like starting to mellow down, right? So do you want me to talk to you about this story, babe, that I told Jonathan, I thought about it, I think three days ago. And I was like, I cannot tell you, babe, I have to save it for the podcast okay, because babe. it is really cringy Just and go toxic. Easy on me, okay? And it made me so sad in the moment. So it's not me anymore. <laughs> we live at the trailer parks, right? What the trailer parks are like, well, how long is it? Like a 10 minute drive, you think? Wait, we live in the trailer like park? when I lived in the trailer parks and then we moved to 18th, like from the trailer parks to oh, the 18th, like 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Okay. 15 minutes drive tops. Cause the streets are small. Remember? Yeah. And Jonathan's going to swear and beg that he never said beg? this and never <laughs> would never act like that. But let me Wait, paint you the story. I think I know where you're going. So we're living in the, the trailers. We're packing up. We're about to move to 18th. We were still active toxicness. Okay. Babe, you better not lie. I text. I was, we were like talking, whatever. And I just kind of felt the vibes were a little off, you know, ever since I told him we're moving. And then I told him like, oh yeah, like we're moving to the house. Like it's on 18th street, you know, like closer to the batting cages, whatever. And... <laughs> I told him along the lines where I was like, are you are you still going to like make the drive to visit me? Because in my head, like it was far, you know, babe, don't even. And cap. Jonathan was like, honestly, like that's a really far drive. Like, I don't know, babe, you're such a liar. When would I ever say that? Babe, I swear we had this conversation and you told me. <laughs> no. And you, I was like, babe, are you're you gaslighting me? Because I think I remember this conversation and you said I you switch drive and run why would i ever ask you because when we're you lived seven, in the trailer park i would run we're to 18 house when we were little we're 18 i mean we when, both have cars why would i ask you if you'd no, run to me at night babe you you made i know no. it sounds silly but no, you, you made are. un reclamo como de like i think that are you still gonna run at night guys, and then honestly, i said something like along the lines of like fuck no that's far guys, but honestly, it was run like, babe it was not I drive feel like jonathan the way that he has coped with like our toxic stage <laughs> is that he has gaslit himself so hard uh, to the point of switching the stories to help him sleep at night yeah yeah i do that with everything i know was little <laughs> so no babe we had this talk and i told you it was it, like it was a long drive would you still make it and you were like honestly like i don't think so like that's gonna be really hard babe look <sighs> there's a there's there's a difference between being toxic and the integrity of someone like who they are like if you've seen inside out you know like the person babe that, that you little, what's know that, what was that thing called the little the swiggles person out the anxiety no the thing that they like are fighting for oh where they're trying to find oh uh, that like yeah. you know what i'm talking about that makes a person yeah i was I feel like I was, yes, I was toxic. I was immature. I was, but I don't think I would have said that's too far for the well, drive. I'm I glad. remember saying. I'm glad you don't think that now because I, the person remember, you are now is no, very I different remember from I the said, person you were back then. That's too, you said, like you were trying to be cutesy. Oh, are you still going to run like Babe, at night? I would. 
Babe, Honey. because I would sneak out at no, night. No, you so wouldn't, I couldn't, no, babe. Listen, we were listen. already 18. No, no, I get it, babe. We were already having cars and stuff, and I could drive good. But my parents wouldn't let me go visit you at whatever time we were trying to be cute and talking through your window. So, no, I would not. We weren't even doing on, that at this going point Going with anymore. my keys and turning on my car would have woken up my parents. So, I remember I still ran. Babe. Even though I had a car, I would still run to you. And you said... Are you still going to run no, like at night, wouldn't. Baba? I'm, and then I did. I remember saying that. I was like, fuck no. Something like that. Like, because lo primero que me salió. Because that was for a 15-minute You getting minute car riled ride? up like this is just telling babe, me that I you swear, sincerely no. don't want to believe because it. And you, you look, put this. Look, the like, listeners are even, listening. This isn't even nostalgia in the back of your head. Like, you just kind of farted it out and never wanted to think about it again. No, but no. Because, I pro- babe. When, okay, like Tell me I this. told you, Other stories most <laughs> most of my, our toxic stories are core memories for me. No, but do you understand you know, like that the other that stories you said up, and but are true? it's a core memory that's lit up in blue. No, okay, but let, listen. You've s- talked about stories that are much worse than this one because this one isn't that bad compared to uh, like other stuff really? I've done to you. And I estoy como traga mi sillón, and I do not fight about. It. I I either change the topic or I I laugh about it because it's so sad. But this one's not that bad, and I'm fighting you about it. So I don't think I said that, honey. No, because that's embarrassing and you feel really dumb for ever saying that. But like I said, honey, like th- these memories like that. No, don't call me honey. Are ingrained <laughs> in my head. Babe, and, they're ingrained, and but look, you also it's not, have it's not you like also the have memory. trauma that you've like distorted, you know? Like, no, it, the, it's not even the memory. Like it's the feelings. Um, like I feel the way I felt that time when I was reading the text message. I was like, damn. Babe, I was... But it was at eighteen, I, yeah, I was toxic, but I was obsessed with you. So no, why you would weren't. I say no? You weren't. No, why you weren't. Why would no, I say weren't. like no? I'm not gonna go drive, guys. And minutes. honestly, like if I'm being honest, like at eighteen, when I was living at 18th Street, oh, that's crazy, huh? Um, <laughs> John, Jonathan wasn't obsessed with me. He was obsessed with nobody else having me. Like you, Damn, that's what you were obsessed deep. with, and that's why no. we would break up for a week, and like the next week you'd be like trying to get me back because this was when you were leaving the dead fish, leaving flowers on my doorstep i threw them out and then you put them on my car that's rose yeah, that petals you know and so <laughs> 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 yeah maybe i was obsessed with like you didn't like, really want me but you didn't want nobody to like really want me you know like i feel like no i don't know but yeah guys i just like i always tell my mom i don't see 18 you told your mom that no no but oh. i was telling her like i don't I don't see 18th Street as like, I don't think I went through too many traumatic events there. I just don't think about that. And I don't have memories of that place. Isn't that crazy? Okay, I have one. Can I tell him the closet yeah. one? Oh, my God. Or is your mom going to listen to this? We're married and we have kids, babe. It's fine. But that was super disrespectful. That was, the, that was the worst thing we ever did, don't you think? No. <laughs> We just looked at each other and we knew right away. Babe, there's no way you're... Now that I think about it... I'm pretty sure she knows. Your mom's a heavy sleeper, though. Anyways. um, Mm -hmm. My mom's a light sleeper. So you know what I'm talking about? What? Never mind. (laughs) Anyways. Okay, guys. So at that that house, that's when... um, Damn, we were crazy. Especially knowing how scary your dad was. Yeah, I know. But you're also, I took advantage of like her dad not really being like so. A dad. <laughs> like me and my dad didn't yeah. even talk to each other. Like Lil Polo is a good ass dad. I feel like he would have been like, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know? Mm-hmm. that we just talk about Lil Polo as being a good dad because of Santi's videos. But anyways, um, guys, how did it all start, babe? Like, um, I think it was just like we started. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, okay. You and I would watch movies in the living room Mm -hmm. and then it would get later and later and later and i would leave i would always leave right and i would leave you know first night it was at 10 11 12 1 2 and sometimes 3 in the morning really i don't remember that supposedly watching movies no we would but you know and then no we would just watch movies don't be gross (laughs) <laughs> and then um no yeah we were just watching yeah. and then um one of those nights i think my suegra committed the very large error of saying pues ya quédate aquí. 
Like, ya te vas en la mañana, es bien tarde. Shout out to my suegra. She always did look out for me in that sense. Like, she didn't want me driving, you know, late or stuff. And, and she it was sac- a long, long 50-minute drive. <laughs> but it was through the ghetto, okay? Like, that street is shady. Like, you're going through old Longmont with no lights. Anyways, whatever. Historic Longmont. Yeah. And um, so, what did I want? Oh, she was like, one night, she was like, pues ya quédate aquí en el sillón, you know, like, aquí te traemos una cobija, ya te vas en la mañana, blah, blah, blah. It must have been like a Friday or Saturday or something, like, you know. And then I was like, okay, you know. And granted, I could do all this stuff at my house because yo entraba por la puerta de atrás y luego, luego en la puerta estaba el basement, so yo luego me bajaba. No es como que tenía que entrar por enfrente y hacer ruido, mis papás estaban ahí, you know, blah, blah, blah. So then, pues me quedé en el sillón. And then the next time rolls around, Otra vez en el sillón. And then the next time rolls around, and Jalissa is like, babe, why don't you just go into my room? Ew. <laughs> so then, whatever. So then, l- slowly but together. surely, we Not started. Actually I sleep. started going into, like, the I room, mean, you know? But because the parents, like, her parents, as soon as they would close the door, pues ya no salían, right? Like, they wouldn't come out. So then one night, should I even say this, babe? This is crazy. When you snuck into, my, into the room? Yeah, basically, oh, and then, but let me tell you how I would go into her room. It wouldn't be like for me being on the living room. So one night I would, so some nights I would like say, okay, ya me voy, blah, blah, blah. You know, and be like, oh, que te vaya bien. So I would leave, park my truck hella far, and then I would run and go back inside. So they would thought think I had left, right? So we did that one night, blah, blah, blah. And it, I came in super late like any other time, you know, late. Oh, they're for sure asleep. And for some reason, that night, one of your parents wants to come into the room, right? Mm-hmm. So then I go into the closet. And stay there. And stay there for a minute, guys. Probably like, what, three, four hours? And so I think my dad was the one that came yeah. to check on me. Because you heard something. And then... I made Jonathan stay in the closet and my dad was like, like we could sense the vibe that he was going to come back. Like someone was going to come back. So we couldn't risk falling asleep. And so I'm like, just go in the closet. Well, point is that Jonathan stayed in the closet for almost four hours because you didn't leave until I took my mom to work the next day. Do you remember? Oh my God, yeah. Yeah. So you stayed there all, I am in the closet then. You took your mom, your dad had already left. Yeah. And then the house was empty and that's when I got out. out. And Rocky saw it all. The no, dog. and I feel like it wasn't even the house that was empty. Like, my brother was probably da- yeah. sleeping in his room, but he lived in the basement. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, because that's so bad. I can't even imagine, like, Belen doing that shit to me. Like, first of all, I'm way... Not that I'm smarter than her parents or whatever. I'm just, like... I'm very paranoid of stuff like that. Like, yeah. people in the house. So, like, Belen could never pull that shit on me. Like, we're going to have those front door open. Belen's. Yeah window open yeah, <laughs> you know and we're gonna but we're not gonna create sneaky kids no like i i, I want to have a relationship where my kids are like dad i have a boyfriend this and this oh like is it cool you. like yeah cool come hang out at the house but he has to be gone by 10 p.m don't stick him in the house you know like yeah. like like mutual respect and like cool parent vibes but still respect me or like the one where i saw like this dad like in uh like two in the morning he saw through his phone like his son sneaking out a girl from his room and like no a girl sneaking out through the door and going into her car you know and then the dad texts the son it's like hey stop being a pussy next time walk her out to her car and make sure she gets in it safe you know yeah and it's like okay. that's that type of that i want to be like yeah. you're not going to be smarter than me unfortunately when it comes to this stuff you know we're gonna have security cameras we're gonna have stuff just like be honest with me you know yeah yeah guys i I don't know, like, I feel like my parents weren't strict, but they were, like, we were pushing it. Don't you think? Like, why? Yeah, that was too crazy. Yeah, like, why did we have to do that? Well, how many years were we into, like, because we were young, right? So, if yeah. you're saying we were 18, We're already there 17, together for four years? 16, 17, 18. Three. Oh. So, you know, like, three. Like, if if yeah. you if it was a guy you had just met, do we But, not? I mean, honestly, it's just, ratchet. like, it's worth it. Like, I think about it, and it's so funny, but, like, it was worth it because, I mean, we ended up getting married. But, like, say we hadn't oh. gotten married, and I'm like, why yeah. was I doing that with my high school boyfriend that we weren't Okay, babe, let's, let's, let's play these scenarios. Say <laughs> I know we would have broken up, not n- no kids or anything. Like, mm-hmm. let's just say Texas was, we never got back together. Mm-hmm. 
but we had already done like a lot of stuff and like a lot of experiences mm -hmm. do you think like when you eventually met your next husband or like you're about to, you're engaged or no i mean for you to be like engaged you have you have to have been with this guy already for another minute you know yeah you think these stories would ever you would have ever come out yeah i feel like like regardless like of our relationship like, like you would you both have to be tipsy and start talking about exes no i feel like or would you be like the girl like we we assumed her scenario which she updated us did i tell you what the girl about her lying about her virginity oh what'd she say okay i'll tell you right now but <laughs> um what if he was like would your re would your responses or your story storytelling depend on how bad he was like before relationship no say you met this guy right mm -hmm. and then you started dating and you find out you know he was a goody two she's not a name not a saint maybe he also had you know one body or whatever but he was like very like you know good kid or good guy i feel but like he had never done anything you could just tell he never did anything close to what like you and i you know the sneaking the no i would tell him because first of all our relationship was toxic and it built me into the person i was right because if i would have never gone through the shit i went even through even if you, he didn't have any stories to yes, tell you back even you know. i would tell him i'd be like yeah i did this and he was my first love and we were crazy and stupid i lost my virginity to him and we did a bunch of sh crazy shit i would throw that key away for another girl <laughs> you wouldn't me. tell a girl uh, oh, like your yeah, next no. wife that no your next wife <laughs> <laughs> like if we, haven't, if we haven't gotten married damn babe that's good i don't know i feel like he would want to know why i was the way i was and and this would all these all conversations would have happened before getting married because imagine it were, it, they were like deal breakers. No, no, I'm saying like you're dating and you yeah. start. You know. Yeah, probably. And then maybe he'd get scared and be like, fuck no. <laughs> I'm not marrying this girl. Yeah, I've always thought about that. Like I have a friend. Well, they're both our friends where he was much, 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 much crazier than she was. And he like came clean about everything. But they're still madly in love. And, you know, sometimes you just got to be honest. I don't know who this friend is. Is he more your friend? yeah okay but we've hung out with both of them okay period yeah now i know who you're talking about but yeah i don't know i feel like your first love builds character you know so it's yeah. kind of funny that you wouldn't come clean about things like that to your future spouse it's just i do understand the girl from the last like about the virginity it's like you do want to match that energy wait know? so if you are about to marry a girl and she's a virgin are you gonna tell her that you're a virgin no oh. obviously if, if <laughs> she sees my if she like knows me like you know like, like well, you've been she, you've been with she, this girl for like, five years okay, and you never did imagine, nothing imagine like you go to texas after we break up you never come back i'm not a youtuber though. you're not a youtuber okay no one knows nothing okay about me yeah like this was when you left to texas but i've also only been with you so why would I, I wouldn't lie. Like, yeah, I've had one girlfriend, one serious thing. Okay, so you would still tell her. Like, she doesn't know who you are. You're in Texas. Yeah, you her but say I had been like a frat bro and I had 30 girls on me, like 30 All bodies. All right, buddy. Yeah, I wouldn't. That's embarrassing. But I feel like if, yeah, I guess these are stupid scenarios because they would never happen. Oh, but. yeah. No, this was, I should have said this back then about the whole Angela thing. But What? No, about the whole celebrities, like, they can have whoever they want, and, like, it's just that, you know? Yeah. I just want to read this because this girl um, sent it twice on email, and it's, am I the asshole? And I feel like she just really needs to hear our perspective on it. Okay. So I'm going to read it because if I'm going to send something twice to my favorite YouTuber, I hope they read it. I hope I'm your favorite YouTuber, girl. But anyways, she says, am I the asshole? Please read. I'm trying not to make this a novel. It's actually not that long. First time mom to a one-year-old baby girl, married an older man, and she's our first kid together. His parents already have 10 grandkids, not including my little one. They are not very present, whether that be in person because they live in Mexico or over the phone. They don't call to see how she is, how we are, if she needs anything, nada. Pero a huevo quieren que les pague uno el teléfono y que les saquen de apuros financieros. That's another story. But my question is, since they haven't made an effort at all to be part of their lives, am I the asshole for distancing ourselves from them? I know what it's like to have my paternal family distant and not very much part of my life, and it would hurt me to see them procurar a mis primos, pero a mí y a mis hermanas no. I just want to have her avoid, avoid all those feelings. I appreciate your advice, your opinions. I'm really at a crossroads right now. Thank you. 
Girl, you got to love your kid more than anything else in this world. Mm -hmm. You know, and unfortunately, just hay gente caca, sí. Like, abuelos que, like, luckily, Franco has the best grandparents. And I have, I had the best grandparents. And I cannot relate to any of this. But I cannot imagine. Y con eso, con ese dolor te digo, like, y you just have to put, yeah, you just have to put your kid first. Your grandparents have other grandkids. My yeah. grandparents have other grandkids and they treat us all the same. And my grandparents live in Mexico. Like my grandma is so like is older and old school, but I feel like to stay connected, she's made the effort to get an iPhone, learn WhatsApp and Facebook and cada like once a week me pide fotos de Belén y Franco. And you know? she calls you yeah. and it's like when you talk to her, it's like you never went a week without because talking to her. Before you said the whole phone thing, this is why I'm sharing my experience. I'm not just trying to like shit on your situation by saying oh look at my gram no i'm i'm giving you an example because before you said que les pagaban los teléfonos i was like no pues así es la gente de allá like mm -hmm. the rancho like pues, they're not very lovey like you know if it's not in person they're not very but then you said no si son buenos para el teléfono y para estas otras cosas otros yeah. viles that's messed up that like is they so know you up. exist they know that yeah, you have know, a daughter and like i hate that guys like that's <sighs> that irks me yeah and if there's one thing that jonathan and like this generation of parenting has all like taught me is you will always put your kids first always and no matter what situation they're in your grandparents um your parents your sisters your brothers like you always put your kids first that's the first person that is like your priority so whatever you think is in her best interest if you're trying to have her avoid the feelings of feeling less next to her cousins you are doing the perfect job parenting. Like, that is amazing for you, you know? Yeah, and look, a lot of you guys liked what I said about Corny the other week when you wanted me to take it out, <laughs> or like Ian take it out, our editor. He left and, it? Yeah, and he oh left it. God. And a lot of people were like, oh, you know, like, this is what makes Jonathan Jonathan. Like, he says what everyone's And he says thinking. what he thinks. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have one of those other moments. Personally, girl, why would you want those type of grandparents in your baby's life yeah. if they're asking you, to pay their phone that means one they're not financially stable which if as a grandparent means what did you do with your life yeah sorry if i'm being harsh i know that is a very harsh reality but a lot of people will understand me as a grandparent you have to have most likely done something with your life y para like no andar procurando a tus, we all understand diseases and illnesses and and things like that that maybe you know tank the the bank or that something could have happened pero si son buenos para andar pidiendo esas cosas y no preocupa, preocupar a tus, you know, sus grandkids, a tus hijos, then why do you want them in their life? Like, I feel like that's just more damage to this little girl. Yeah, and like, the way that my mom always says it is, hay que, what is that word she says? Hay que, like, kind of acts of service type vibes. Like, my granjear. mom, hay que, hay que granjear a la gente. And my mom has always said this, like, you guys are no stranger to us. My mom loves helping us out in every, like she does things that she should, like why is she doing this? But every time I talk to her, she's like, I do it because I love you and because I want to take anything that's like gonna stress you out out of the way. You know, so she's like, if I can help you with the laundry, if I can help you like tidying something up, I'm gonna do it because why not? Like I want my daughter to be stress free. She's like, and then that helps you do more things with your kids or with your husband. Like it doesn't matter. Like she's like, yo granjeo a la gente. And she's like, and I'm not like that just with you. I was like that with my suegra. At my work. mom has amazing stories of my grandma in Paz Descanse. She does that at work. She does that with her sisters, with any person in this life. My mom granjea a la gente, not expecting anything in return. You know, so it's like if if his parents really wanted you guys to help them with the phone, the least they can do is call and be like, hey, ¿cómo está la bebé? Mándenme una foto de la bebé, you know? So. Yeah, because um, I talked to uh, my sweater about this the other day. Like, obviamente, like, mandamos dinero or, like, you know, Julissa and her mom and stuff like that to, like, dinero a México. Pero esa gente que... Si nos procuran, you know, mm -hmm. procuran a Franco, a Yulisa. Oh, siempre me saludan a Yulisa. You know, and we have no, like, that's no problem. We love to help our family as much as we can in Mexico. But, like, if a stranger just out of nowhere, like, you know, the, the typical Reddit or TikTok story, it's like, oh, pa la quinceañera de Yasmin Fernanda Alejandra, you know, <laughs> like those TikToks. Quiero que seas padrino del grupo. And it's like, you don't even know this cousin. Mm -hmm. That's like the same vibe this is getting. Like, mandame yeah. pal teléfono, but, 
you know, ¿Cómo está mi nieto? ¿Cómo? like if they were the grandparent, we're like, like I said, guys, emergencies always happen. So you never know people's finance. I'm not shitting on people's financial situation. I'm just saying, you know, see like, oh, like, mandame. like if he was, if the grandparents were involved and love their granddaughter so much and then ask for like their phone, then, then there's no problem yeah. because there's like a mutual, like, yes. you know, yeah, understanding. like I'm trying, like, I don't have money to offer you as a grandparent or I don't have materialistic things but i can offer you my love and exchange. just know i love your daughter yeah. you know and like that's why oh they want me to pay their phone and they call me twice a week to see how we're doing perfect you know but at the end of the day we're just here to tell you that whatever you choose for your daughter is best and it, honestly like that sounds pretty reasonable to us you know yeah so yeah definitely talk to your husband about that and tell the, him why you feel the need to do the things that you want to do because then miscommunication can happen and you never want that but Aside from that, guys, I really wanted to read that. If you guys ever have something that you really want us to read, of course, send it to the email, spillthebeansjj at gmail.com. And if you have any other shorter stories, um, send them to our DMs on spillthebeansjj on Instagram. But without further ado, that's it for today's podcast, guys. Please tell Angel and Christian to get out of my head because I just want to, like, I'm excited to see your comments. Please tell me what you think. All right? Yeah, guys. And without further ado. We'll see you next week. Next week. Later. Bye. Yay Networks.